welcome to this episode of Think Business. I'm looking forward to talking about um, the power of giving back today. Uh, and at, at the same time that you're balancing your business, uh, Hassan Dixon, it's great to see you. Uh, always great to see you. I'm looking forward to connecting with you. Um, your, your day job is director of Percadia, and uh, we're going to talk about that. But you're also the co-founder of the Cheyenne C. Dixon Foundation. And we're going to we're going to really dive into that, the power of giving back, the power of legacy, uh, the power of honoring um, someone's memory. And we're going to we're going to kind of dive into that um, a lot. Uh, but first, um, Hassan, I'm a business coach and I work with people all over the country who are successful but stuck. And I work with them to get them unstuck. And one of the things I hear a lot is that it's really hard to find balance in a day. It's hard to um, have a career and also, um, you know, have a personal life, a family life, and then give back, right? It's hard, it's hard. And so we're gonna be talking a lot about today about a little bit about your business and more so about the Cheyenne Dixon Foundation. Um, but how do you balance everything? How do you get unstuck to do a little bit of it all? A little bit of all, and, and first and foremost, appreciate you having me on, John. It's uh, truly a pleasure uh, to be on my fellow brother on this. but. Um, the balancing act, it's always a tough one, man. It's a lot going yeah. on. Um, but the reality is, and what I found out through time, is that if you intentionally make the time to balance your schedule and do what you need to do, you can make it happen. I do think there will be some stress there. There will be some hoops and hurdles there. But once you kind of get a concrete schedule and you're intentional about it, uh, really the sky's the limit and that's what i've been able to do and granted i have my my hoops and my hurdles as well um hoops yeah. of fire to be honest <laughs> trying to trying to yeah. figure out scheduling and stuff between business and nonprofit and volunteer stuff but uh but yeah just be intentional about it and uh it usually works itself out well and i think also uh hassan i think sometimes it's also easier to have the intention when you're doing something that you are so passionate about that you're in alignment with and that and that fits who you are you know in this case you founded this foundation i think sometimes people get on boards or get on committees that aren't in alignment with what they really want to do or why they really want to be there and so to me the message i'm i'm taking from you is you know if you're going to have intention the intention should be should even start with what you choose to get involved in and yeah. and and think community what i'll suggest is you know, grow the muscle of, of learning how to say no to things. Uh, so yeah. so the, so the things that you want to say yes to, they appear. Uh, so thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that. It's good to talk about um, intention. So I want to kind of keep this conversation of intention going going on for a minute, because I think it's it's something that I talk a lot about as a business coach, right? Setting intention for your day um, and setting intention for you know, pretty much anything you do and taking that pause to actually set intention, which really can take under a minute or under 30 seconds or under 10 seconds. Right. I say that because I think I don't want people to get confused that setting intention is like a one hour, you know, um, thing that you need to do. And so when you're setting intention, uh, what is one thing that you do that you can share with other people to make setting intention a little bit easier for them? Uh, I would say when setting intention, what I do is I find whether it's a small, big or medium sized detail that I really love, like, or really appreciate to make me want to be intentional. And that's how I do yeah. it. A thousand times yeah. over. It kind of falls back on what you were saying before and how you, you know, you need something that you actually really, um, that really gets you going in order to, right. to make that effort to be intentional. But, uh, yeah, that's that's basically what I do when I'm working to be intentional. Just fixate yeah. on some little minute detail and kind of go from there. Yeah. The way I'll define that detail from what what I think you're saying, and at least that's, that's how I'm hearing it, is that small little nuance detail is what is intrinsically driving you to yes. set the intention, which 100%. is why you got to be in alignment with what you're doing, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> right, right, right. So I love that. I love that. Thanks. Uh, thanks Asa, on that. All right. So let's talk about we're going to do a little mini business course, right? We're going to wrap mm -hmm. in a mini life uh, uh, course. 
and, and, and because I want to learn more about the Cheyenne uh, C. Dixon Foundation. Um, and before we get into the course, I want to know kind of the foundation. I know a little bit of it, but from you, the foundation of, you know, how and why it started and what the, you know, and, 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 and how it is of service now to people. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. I guess I'll start with how it, uh, start with how it started, kind of just take it from there and how it's a service. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, 20, 2009, uh, unfortunately, my younger sister, she was 12 years old at the time, passed away, car accident with the entire family. Um, uh, you know, very so terrible sorry. time loss. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a lot going on at that moment in time. I was actually about to be a senior in high school, had a really good year playing sports, being in a new school. And then, you know, that was kind of one of, it was basically the worst time of my life when it came down to it. Um, personally, I'm not the type to really crawl, crawl up, curl up in a ball and just not try to move forward from things. And it took a little bit of time, but as time progressed, I was like, how do we um, continue to honor Cheyenne's name at a very high capacity? Uh, Cause she was a straight A student. She was a great athlete um, and she just went above and beyond all the time. But one of the biggest things uh, that really allowed her to do that was the resources she had. She had great financial backing. She had access to different mentors and teachers and the family to really keep her grounded to really, I would say, emphasize her attributes, her raw attributes of intelligence and all that great, those great things. And kind of piece this together, like, how do we honor Cheyenne? How do we do this? And uh, we concluded, you know, why don't we just award the kids that are just like Cheyenne? the kids that are going above and beyond, that are doing as much as they can do inside and outside of school. Um, and we started at Cheyenne's middle school because she was in seventh grade when she passed. So we started at her middle school, Rocky Hill Middle School in Clarksburg, Maryland, and um, started out giving an award immediately. And this was something that my mom put into fruition with the principal there back in, I think it was, 2000, it was 2009 going to 2010. They started immediately. And uh, we've been doing that ever since. We To this day, I still give out a, the, the award for, um, it's like the Cheyenne C. Dixon Leadership Award at Rocky Hill Middle School. Basically, it's like the coolest, most popular kid that's doing everything, getting all A's at Rocky Hill. Yeah. Um, it's been, been nice giving that out. And as time progressed, um, we didn't have the nonprofit yet. Uh, we just kept doing a lot of things in Cheyenne's name just to, you know, keep everything alive as much as possible. And uh, it wasn't until I would call it 2019 where we created a nonprofit. And in this moment in time, we talked about synergy. We made sure uh, that we can align everything. So I learned a very long time ago, my passion is actually teaching and kids specifically. Uh, so I started really doing that on the ground, fresh out of college in 2017, just volunteering, going to schools, doing my thing. Um, and by happenstance, I was able to start a program. So I teach fourth and fifth graders uh, in uh, in this area at multiple schools, mainly really one school in Silver Spring, Maryland. I've been doing this for some time. And I started in 20, 2018 specifically. And when I had that going on and we're thinking about how do we keep stuff up and keeping the shine's name. I was like, you know what, let me just take everything that I'm doing with these kids. Let's take the leadership award and let's also throw a scholarship in there. Let's create all this stuff and put it under shine's name. And that's what we ended up yeah. doing. Um, so we have multiple programs throughout the County working with kids. Um, as you know, John, I do like to travel. So when we travel, we're in Cheyenne's name. If we're donating to different countries, all that good stuff. Yeah. We've been everywhere from uh, Jamaica to, to East Africa. Uh, where else have we been? Um, that's all I can think of the top of my head. And then lastly, we created, similar to the eighth grade uh, leadership award, we have a Cheyenne C. Dixon scholarship, a $10,000 scholarship that we put into fruition at the high school that Cheyenne would have went, went to. So we started that in... 2022 um and you know we got uh we got two award winners so far now we got one coming up in the in the uh <laughs> in the next month or so so we have interviews probably about next week uh, but yeah that's how it all came into fruition um and we just want to make sure that we continually uh 
one, just give back to give back to the community as much as we possibly can, and and also just keep Shine's name alive um, yeah. for many years to come. So, well, um, you know, my my thoughts and prayers um, to your entire family for that loss. I can't imagine how devastating it was, his son. Mm -hmm. um, but what a beautiful tribute to Cheyenne to build, you know, this this legacy of her name and her um, and and just the the intellect, you know, that you're talking about how she you know was a straight A student and just kind of passing that energy. Mm -hmm. I you know it's 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 every parent's nightmare and every sibling's nightmare, right? What you yeah. what you've walked through um, and what your whole family has walked through. But um, but what a beautiful you know path that you have built out of tragedy, and yeah. and my my question is is you know how did you you know to me it's 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 you know this this mini life course that I, that I want to talk about right now is how did you find the strength right what are three ways that you found the strength to do this because as beautiful as it is I. I I would think, and I know this from just losing people in my life, sometimes to even just talk about them, sometimes to tell the stories. I mean, it kind of almost quantum leaps you back to so many areas of trauma and pain and, and sadness. And it's, mm -hmm. it's that can be difficult. And I think it prevents people from, from setting up a foundation like you've set up for yeah. Cheyenne because it's yeah. just too painful. And so if you if you had to give kind of three suggestions on how to for someone else to kind of, you know, follow your path, you know, and find the strength and actually execute and keep it, um, you know, keep it growing. What would those three yeah. things be? Three things. I'll start. I'll start with one. Um, I would definitely say take a step back um, and think about what that individual would want. Um, and that's that's where, that's not where I started, but that was part of the process. My sister likes to be very front and center to say the least. Um, she yeah. was basically me, but a little bit more bossy, much more, way more intelligent. Um, but I know she would want to be front and center in some capacity. I'm like, how could I make, how would I make Cheyenne happy if she was actually alive? And yeah. kind of take a step back and be like, let me push forward and do that. Um, another thing would just be, another thing would just be um, just, I would just say pushing through that adversity you felt and that those just emotions that you feel rawly um, and channeling them to do something of substance in opposition to, you know, maybe getting stuck in a bar or a shell and not wanting to move forward. And luckily, yeah. by the grace of God, I'm really able to any type of really tragic event or bad things that happen. It's just like, all right, well, this happened. This is this sucks. This is terrible. This is the worst thing that can happen. But it's reality, you know. So it's yeah. like, what do I do now? That's all we have is now, right? It's like, what can I do now to, in essence, help this situation be better? And, yeah. and really, that, that's what we did, man. We're just like, all right, let's just push forward. We have this moment in time and we just, you know, um, help others and, and make sure Cheyenne wasn't here just in vain and, and just, you know, for some moment in time. Like, we're going to make sure that this is helping as many people as possible, this crazy event that took place. Um, and, uh, you know, I would say really lift up society while doing that. Um, yeah. and, and, and lastly, I would say the, the biggest thing on why I feel like we really were able to do it, uh, <laughs> uh, just getting outside the box of what's typically done. Um, yeah. That's that's one that, and that's me, John. As you know, like that's what that's where I live. That's where I want to be. That's who I want to be as much as I can. Um, just being outside the box, thinking outside the box, doing things 
that are tough. That's kind of like my thing. Um, but at the end of the day, getting out the side of the box and not doing your typical, um, I would say, uh, 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 relive of or like um, mourning of an individual um, and just taking it to a higher stratosphere. Um, that That's what we really, that's how we really, re I was able to kind of really put it into fruition. It's like, all right, well, yeah. you know, this is what's typically done. This is what people do. You know, we usually go off of how we're feeling. I feel some type of way sometimes. I wake up and I cry sometimes, but that's, it is what it is. We are here now, push forward and let's try to use this and take as much positive as we can put onto the earth from it. Let's do it. Yeah. So I hope I, I, hope I answered yeah. the question with three of them. Yeah, you head. did. It was, you, you answered it beautifully. I, um, you know, as, I, as I'm listening to you talk, it's like, you know, you're doing such soul work, right? You're helping so many souls. You're honoring Cheyenne's soul. And and from a personal level, what I'm hearing you say, um, which I do my best to do this too, is, you know, get back to center as fast as you can. So you can, you can live in that servant leadership space, right? It's a, that, like you said, you know, helping others. And, and I think if you can get into that heart space, then sometimes it's easier. And, and you're right. And I'm glad you talked about it. You know, sometimes you cry. I find myself like I cry the most, I would say, in my car. I think because I'm like I'm like driving somewhere. I'm by myself, you know, and it's like you just you just think on a different level. Sometimes it's like a different meditative place when things for me just like where I'm I'm reprocessing certain things. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And uh, so, no, I, I, I appreciate all that. And and uh, what a beautiful foundation that you um, have set up to honor Cheyenne. Uh, the website is Cheyenne C. Dixon Foundation um, dot org uh, for those who want to learn more about it. We're going to talk more about it. But um, no, so I so I appreciate that. Um, everything that you that you shared. Um, let's talk a little bit about business. Let's talk a little bit about business. Um, you're a director at Percadia Commercial Real Estate. Um, you know, what is, you know, we're not going to talk about the market right now because by the time this airs, who knows what the market will be, right? right? And so we want this to be a little evergreen ish, right? So, so let's just talk about kind of business fundamentals on how you, you know, grow and run your business. Um, you know, some of the things that you really kind of, you know, zoom in that, uh, that help you get to, you know, kind of the, the, the level that you want to get to on a daily basis. And so if we were to kind of look at this as a mini business course, you know, yeah. what are three things, Hassan, that you do to just kind of, you know, stay in the zone, um, stay, stay ahead of the, you know, the, the uh, you know, just anybody around you and just kind of, you know, do it your way. So what are three, what are three ways that you um, would recommend that you do and that you would recommend, you know, people kind of try to emulate? Gotcha. Gotcha. So I'll start with this. And uh, I'm a sports guy. You know that I, I grew up playing sports. My dad and my brother played in the NFL and that's kind of been our thing family wise. My sister was a big sports sports person too. my mom. She just loves sports just from us being successful. And it kind of made her cool when she had kids that were good at sports. Long story short, when you're doing any type of sport or you're in the gym or you're doing whatever, failure is like probably one of the or not the most important thing you have to yeah. encounter to do anything, to grow, um, to get better. I know Tom was talking to my buddy yesterday about running uh, 20 and twos back when I played basketball, a good council of freshman year. Like when we started, it was terrible. But, you know, once time progressed, we started killing it. We're failing a few times. We get better. We get better. We get better. I would say embrace failure and just don't yeah. be afraid to fail. That that's yeah. that's that's really what it, that's if I could say one thing that's probably the biggest thing, yeah. um, and I would say yeah. a lot of people just try not to fail or they're scared to fail or they're yeah. afraid of oh man we got this huge deal I don't want to take I don't want to take point on it um, because if it failed it's on me it is what it is you know it what is I mean what it, is. it right. is what it is you get better you learn from it. Um, and this is, I guess this is the next one. You keep moving forward, right? I want to, I want to, I want to comment on that real quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
One, it's 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 very cool to say you're in the NFL. So that I just want to just say that. And but but moving on from that, um, <laughs> failure just re, repackaged failure. I was actually talking about a, uh, about this with a client today. Um, that 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 it's not failure. It's just a lesson learned. Like you got to figure out how to do it and how not to do it. So it's almost you can get the word failure completely out of your vocabulary because you're going to fail. It's not like you're waiting for this big thing. You're going to fail, extract the lesson and move on. So move I just on. think I just want to kind of, I just want to kind of and learn from it and, you know, do better the next time. I just want to kind of just repackage that. All right. Well, what's number two? Number two, I would just say, keep moving forward with that. Um, and that keep moving forward. That happens to be, never get stuck or fixated on i would say the past failure that you encountered because i think sometimes you might go back you might backtrack and be like oh man well i messed this up before no it doesn't matter like you take take the the lesson from take the lesson from the failure that occurred and just keep moving forward no matter what and i think that takes you really to another level that a lot of people um tend to not get to, or maybe they stop at a certain moment in time when it comes down to it. So my thing, fail, keep moving forward. Um, and then lastly, and I think this all, that kind of is all in the same burrito that makes sense or pizza, um, is uh, to never be complacent, man. Cause you, yeah. gotta, you, gotta, you gotta keep growing no matter what, you never stop. Cause when you stop, you get bored. When you get bored, you typically die. So it's like, how do I, deplete this idea of complacency or complete this feeling of complacency, deplete this feeling of complacency as much as possible. Um, and I just, it kind of falls back to what we were talking about originally. You just got to be intentional about it. You got to find new ways to um, go outside the box, create new business, new ways to make getting that new business or um, doing certain deals or being creative fun uh, and really just finding those happy moments within the daunting processes that we all face on the, in the business side, whatever business you're in and just, yeah. you know, taking the time to appreciate them from time to time. Cause it's Absolutely. not always going to be, it's not always going to be the great, you know, happy. We close the deal in our case. Right. And it's like, all right, well, we signed up this deal. Those are like the, the climactic points of the, the times of a lot of jubilation, but there's going to be times where you're running through the trenches of this deal or the trenches of this paper or trenches of whatever work you're doing. And you just need to kind of fixate on one little small nuance within that process yeah. that that might keep you going. It might give you a little smile to think back on or to think of at that moment in time. Um, and I think that's really how I'm able to kind of, I would say, do my best to separate myself from others yeah. at the end of the day and then really just never, never grow complacent because there's always something. There's always something to look forward to. Um, and there's really, there's always something to do and there's always a time to get better, whether that be yeah. within the business world directly, whether that be mentally, emotionally, physically, it's always time to get better in some capacity. And my thing is yeah. when you start getting better, man, it's just like, all right, well, <laughs> might be running to the Grim Reaper soon. So just keep, Amen. keep getting yeah. better no matter what your age is and keep rolling. Yeah. Well, it's been said, let me see if you know who said this. If your dreams don't scare you, they aren't big enough. <laughs> oh, I know. I've heard it so many times. But it's Muhammad said? Ali. He's Muhammad Ali. Ali. He's right behind me. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's why I said I wanted to throw out right, right, right. right. I wanted to make right. it easy for you, Hassan. I wanted to make it easy for you. <laughs> um, so, so take me back now. Uh, take me back to a mentor of yours that that has provided you guidance it could be 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, you know, that provided you a piece of guidance that helps you today. Oh, man. Uh, can we do two or how many mentors can we get? We can, we I'll can say, everyone. yeah, I'll, I'll start. I'll start. One of my, my, my first mentors um, was really my grandmother. Uh, she passed in like 2003, but Growing up, she was always there and, and she really didn't, it was more of a, a no nonsense type of ideology that she kind of yeah. preached to us. And it wasn't very direct. It was more so by like the actions um, yeah. and just being, and the actions basically gave me the mental foundation of like one, 
you can be whoever you want to be and you can do great things. Never yeah. let anybody or let society tell you otherwise. So we, me, my sister and my cousins who were very close with her and um, we basically grew up thinking we could take over the world. We never had any, any type of ceiling, whether it be glass or cement or whatever that was placed yeah. upon us. And the thing is, no, she never said it. It was just through how she, she, how she moved. Us. Yeah. How she moved with us, how she moved to, um, and yeah. we just took that perspective and ran with it to the point where every one of my cousins is, is striving in whatever field they're in, just given the fact of how great of a mentor she was. She was also a teacher. So she instilled in me without instilling me, Hey dude, you might want to teach. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, she did everything without saying it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds yeah. like she, she held the space, you know, it sounds like she defines, you know, when you run at, when you keep your energy high and your frequency high and your vibration high, you carry just, you carry that uh, energy with you and you create yeah. a space where people can feel it. You know, it's like just, yeah. a, it's just a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I love your, I love your grandma. I didn't even know her. Yeah. She just yeah. rose me up. Yeah. She, <laughs> she was excited, man. She was like, she got, she could get yeah, a little yeah. crazy too, but uh, she, she was, uh, yeah. she, she kept, she kept us in line, man. And she taught us so many things without even having to Good. blatantly say it which is, I feel like the Good. best way to really be a mentor at the end of the day. So absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Tell yeah. me your second mentor in under a minute. Oh, second mentor under the minute. Uh, I won't go typical. I'm gonna go with one of my guys I met who man fresh out of playing football and all this good stuff. And I didn't understand anything. And I met this dude, his name was AJ Raju. Um, still name is his name still AJ Raju. He's a lawyer out in uh, Philadelphia with the Temple University. And he was one of the first people who actually sat down with me outside and talked business, like outside of the sport arena, had coaches, yeah. had all these things. But he's the one that really made the business world cool for me. Um, yeah. And he also made the idea of giving back even cooler. So when I saw yeah. this guy, he's killing it. He's doing all these deals. Um, he was working as a CEO of Dilworth Paxson at the time. And they, you know, handle commercial mortgage-backed securities. I didn't even know what that was at that time. But yeah. long story short, get in the room and he was just like, look, man, I think you're going to be really successful. Um, though it doesn't matter what you're going to do with life, but just keep rolling. But he he really emphasized the importance of giving, it, giving back, um, which I obviously appreciated. But then he also said something that was really funny, John. He said, you know, I feel like, as much as I give back and as much as somebody else may give back, that is what it is. But like, honestly, man, you as a man of color or just as a black man in general and, and younger, it just looks cooler. Yeah. <laughs> and when he said that, I was like, that's very direct. I'm like, that's kind of, I can't, I kind of can see how, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. But uh, he was very straightforward. Um, and just like, basically he was kind of the first person that showed me like, all right, well, this is a, well, you can balance this for sure. Cause I saw him doing yeah, it. He's more busy right. than I am period yet. He's just doing everything. It's like, he balanced it perfectly. Yeah. He had his foundation. He, had, he was doing these deals. He was originating. He just was doing everything at a very high level all the time. So I'm like, all right, well, if he can do it, then, you know, maybe I can do the same thing and maybe do it to a higher capacity one day. So. Uh, I love, I love both those stories. You know, when I was 18 years old, my dad gave me a set of tapes. That's by Brian Tracy called the psychology of success. And he said mm -hmm. to me, Jonathan, I think you'll do really well in school, but you'll learn more from these people. I became obsessed at that time. I wanted, I knew I wanted to become a business coach and write and help other people and have a global business. I, I knew at 18 years old, that was before the internet. Wow. And the, when I, when I listened to the tape sets by Brian Tracy, one of the very first things he said is if somebody else did it, so can you. And I thought, <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. I, I mean, if, if well, and I was interviewing somebody this week and they were talking about um, the content doesn't matter, but they were talking about somebody who didn't know something and started this enormously successful business. And they just went out and talked to 200 people and then started the business. So mm -hmm. you really can have everything if you reach out to like you're talking about your mentors, you move with no fear, you yeah. you put it out there and you do the work every day a little bit at a time until one day you look behind you and you say wow i can't believe 
10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, built what I'm doing right now. You know, it's all about the small little pieces. So I, yeah. I love all your stories. They, you know, there's a through line and a thread of everything that you're talking about of just intrinsic high standards for yourself. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what I, that's what I love about what you're talking yeah. about from you to your grandma and everything in between. So yeah, for sure. Um, all right, quick speed round. Um, yeah. A book, a TED Talk, or an article that's had a big impact on you? Oh, man. Um, a book. I got one right here. I'm about to pull it out. Uh, let's see. It is... For some reason, I'm blanking. Let's go with The Alchemist, man. That's uh, my, favorite, it's my favorite book. That is, that is my... That's my... That's my book of choice. That's what gets me going. That's what me wakes too. me up when I'm asleep. So yeah. I'm going to Alchemist. Right, <laughs> right. Because, and, and I don't want to give away the book because it's, it's my all-time favorite book. Um, I actually just uh, put something, um, um, I actually just posted something online yesterday with a quote from, from, uh, from Paolo. And, uh, you know, that, you know, and, and, and I love the book. And I don't, I don't like talking about the book because I don't want to ruin the book for anybody. But if you're struggling where you are, read the book. Exactly. It's a beautiful book. Um, best piece of wisdom you've ever received? Oh, the best piece of wisdom I've ever received. Oh, man. Hmm. <laughs> oh, man. It's actually funny. This was on the back of a Nike shirt I had when I was like 12. Um. <laughs> It was like the difference between a man who can and a man who can't is like nothing. And they're both right. Yeah. Which one are you? You just like have it. to believe in yourself. That's it. And it was the back of a Nike shirt and it probably was said much better than what I said, but that was one. Right. That was a very, that was a pretty good quote that I was like, Oh, that's, yeah. that's real. <laughs> um, last question, uh, Hassan, uh, finish this sentence. One thing everybody can do to 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 raise their own level of standards and get to their next level of potential is consistency i love it um tell everybody about two things one where they can learn more about the foundation mm -hmm. two where they can learn more about you and who your ideal clients are got it uh learn more about the foundation on the website shinecdixonfoundation.org it's googleable it should pop up immediately Click the buttons, check it out. Feel free to reach out to the email on there. That goes directly to me specifically, and I will see and I will respond. So let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you guys want to kind of get ahead of the game and maybe get your kids that $10,000 scholarship, you know, uh, <laughs> early. Probably drop it in my head to see if we can we can be looking at you once you get into different high schools. So um, that's the best way to learn more about it and to contact me directly. Um, business client wise, I, I align everything, John, you know, I, I, I try to align as much as possible. Um, and I, I like to work with groups similar to myself. So I like to work with a lot of nonprofits. Um, and I, I focus on groups that do a lot of great deeds in society, mainly on our side is residential services. Um, so you build a building and then you have services to help those residents. Um, and you also have services to help the kids and the families and all that good stuff. Uh, so that's really and you provide oh, them and you provide them find, we find them with financing okay. uh to to you know get their buildings built to refinance their buildings to buy different buildings um and to also most you know even more importantly to to start the residential services or uh to grow those residential services so we have yeah. a deal we close in my backyard one of my clients um, and they don't even have residential services at that property yet. But I feel like a few years down the line after our refinance and a few things work in uh, in combination within the market, I think, uh, you know, those th that big apartment complex will definitely be able to have residential services. Now, that, that's the biggest win, man. Yeah, that's the biggest yeah. win. When they ask me, like, do you want to write an article on this? I'm like, no, I want to write an article once the residential services come into fruition. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to, we close the deal. We close deals all the time. It's fine. I want to see when we actually impact, impact, and we create yeah. this new thing for these kids, for these families that haven't been, that hasn't been seen before in this area, or really at that capacity, because there's a lot of units. That's when we did, that's when I'll, you know, we'll talk about maybe writing an article on it. That's what matters. So, I love it. 
Yeah, I love it. Hassan, um, I, I love this podcast because for many, many reasons. I get to talk to people all over the globe. But, um, you know, as a business coach, I work with successful people who are stuck and get them unstuck uh, from solopreneurs to fortune companies, from salespeople, managers, executives, owners, et cetera. And I love it. And when I have guests, they align with my mission of helping people get unstuck. And you shared a ton of content today. I want to extract just a couple of things, which is one, embrace failure. Uh, and then as we kind of talked about, look at it as a lesson um, and really just have high standards for yourself, right? Yeah. And, and create that space, that space that your grandma created for you, you know, as, as you know, it sounds like that's the space you hold for yourself. And that's the space that others feel when they're around you, uh, not only in your business, but also in the foundation. And but lastly, and most importantly, is, you know, um, making part of your legacy, keeping other people's legacy alive. And Cheyenne's foundation and, you know, the the beautiful soul she was, uh, you know, we, we keep her name alive and uh, and it's in every ounce of what you do and and the lineage of every person that gets every scholarship and that's affected by the foundation. So, you know, blessings to you and your family for taking something that was, um, you know, unimaginably um, horrific and doing and having the strength to do what you've done with it. So, um, you know, I just, I love that. I love that. So thank you for sharing. Thanks for sharing your story. Thanks for sharing your wisdom. Uh, Think community. If uh, Hassan can help you, Hassan, tell him how to connect with you. I would say hit me up via email, Hassan.Dixon at Bricadia.com. That's H-A-S-S-A-N dot Dixon, D-I-X-O-N at Bricadia, B-E-R-K-A-D-I-A dot com. So. I love it. I love it. And Think community, you can reach me if you want to talk about any type of coaching, keynotes or anything like that trainings at johndwaskin.com. Hassan, an absolute pleasure. I loved every second of it. Thanks. Uh, so thanks much. so much, man. Appreciate the opportunity. Stay on for a sec, just a second. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.